The beginning of the study of magnetism can be traced back to Egypt. Also we find the Greeks used it, and the, among the Greeks and early Egyptians, we have the first understanding of the nature of magnetism. It was used principally in healing. It was well known to Pythagoras, who gave us considerable information on the subject, which was promptly forgotten by everybody else. Then we have little knowledge of it, except through the Arabs. The Chinese were aware of it because of the discovery of the Marinus compass. But for the most part, it was neglected until the uh, 17th century, when it became involved in the story of Rosicrucianism. The alchemists, the Rosicrucians, and the Hermetists all were un unfolding phases of magnetic theory. Then we come down a little later and we come upon a curious instrument, uh, Mesmer's magnetic tub. This was a kind of tank in which many people put their feet at the same time and held hands and created a battery out of the water in the tank. Incidentally, the magnetic theory is based upon a very simple fact, namely that what we call empty air is the not empty at all. It is the most profoundly used every, of all the elements that we know anything about. We all live within air and have our meaning, being, and we know that if air fails, we die. But what we do not realize is that air is not just some oxygen or helium or something of this nature. Air is something in itself. It is a substance of itself. It is a substance so real and so important that it's almost impossible to estimate it. It is a tremendous field of magnetic energy. The atmosphere carries the magnetism of the sun. The study of the magnetic powers of the sun will be more or less clearly understood by the study of the seasons. Winter, summer, spring, and these things have all to do with a magnetic factor in the air. And we think of it only as in trying to explain it as a physical astronomical phenomena, since as the rotation and revolutions of the sun and planets. But each of these planets is a field of magnetic energy. And this energy comes to us through what we call air. One thing we have learned from television is that air transmits. We know, for instance, that we can have all kinds of programs on the air at the same time. And they can come from all directions. And they can overlap and interlap. But each one will remain separately identified as though it was moving in a channel or a circuit of its own. Something went through was vibration. And this vibration in, in the magnetic field can be divided into an infinite complexity of separate emanation. In other words, if we had a thousand different channels, they could be differentiated in the magnetic field so that each one would be broadcast correctly and properly for whatever it is. Thus we realize there's something out there besides air, something besides helium and oxygen, something besides the ordinary factors we take into consideration scientifically. We are in the presence of a mysterious agent an agent that is part of everything that we are. Now, studying magnetism as it comes into the human body, we discover along with Kilda that each human body is surrounded by an etheric or energy field. This energy field is sometimes referred to as an aura, but it is not the true aura that we think of in metaphysics. This magnetic field is an area of energy. This area of energy forms a, an egg-like atmospheric sheath around the physical body, usually extending three to five feet from it in each direction. This energy field is the basis of virtue, because this energy field depends for its reality, its serviceability, and its protecting power to move emotion, thought, and the attitudes of the person around which this magnetic field is gathered. In other words, the individual, if they are normal, if mentally, emotionally, and physically, 
They are keeping the rules. This magnetic field forms a tremendous protection. It is normal, it is healthy, it is constantly able to handle infections and all kinds of difficulties. It will help to heal wounds, it will help to recover the use of functions and organs, and if we are deprived of some part of the body, it will try to compensate for us. As long as the individual takes proper care of his magnetic field, it will serve him. Now this is a phase of morality that is generally overlooked. It is assumed that these magnetic fields uh, are something you don't pay much attention to. They're there, maybe they'll help a little. But the truth of the matter is, the practically the whole survival of the individual depends upon maintaining the integrity of this flow of energy into the magnetic field. This energy comes from the sun, it comes through a mysterious energy tube in the magnetic field, it enters the individual through the crown of the head, it disseminates through the entire body, and it's excreted back again through the lower centers of the body and is re-cleansed by the solar energy. This is a kind of a little private tank or capsule of life that we are all carrying about with us all the time. Now the problem of morality in this is very definite. The moment we break rules, we damage that magnetic flow. We have got to keep the laws of nature, and these in turn are the laws of God, or the magnetic field fails. It can fail because of physical intemperances, which reduce its integrity and reduce its power. It can be wasted in riotous living, which is a common cause these days. It can be variously destroyed by moods, by attitudes, by fears, by complexes. It can be destroyed or damaged by alcohol, drugs, narcotics, all kinds of things. But if this field is damaged, it immediately reacts into health. It, it damages the individual's vitality. It makes him more easily subject to contagions and infections, and it definitely shortens the life expectancy. Now we think of the magnetic field as surrounding the entire structure of the body, as Kilner shows in his work on the human atmosphere, and Babbitt also in his study of the atom. This, however, is only a phase of it. Each part of the body has a magnetic field. Each unit within the individual has its survival in a unit of energy. And this unit of energy is present in the smallest subdivision of imaginable space. It is in the tiniest atom. There is no such a thing as a dead particle in the universe. Even if it is killed by something, the very disintegrating process is a, is a symbol of life energy. Therefore, we are confronted with the natural problem of realizing that virtue is to keep the law of the energy field. Now, the law of the energy field, just by coincidence, is also the law of integrity. The energy field is what establishes right and wrong. The energy field tells us that to lose our disposition and temper fit is wrong. Uh, to use various negative, destructive attitudes is wrong. To compromise the principles of right living is wrong. To think badly, to feel unpleasantly, to be engaged in any action or concept which is contrary to the common good damages the magnetic field and therefore is wrong. Selfishness injures that field. Every vice we know, the breaking of any of the Ten Commandments and a number of other rules results in damage to that field. It has nothing to do with nation, it has nothing to do with the ordinary concepts of codes, because the final code itself is based upon the life principle in each part of the human constitution. So we have each little cell has its own moral responsibilities. The stomach has its own magnetic field. The stomach is not simply an organ, it is an organism. It is a living thing within the human body. The same is true of the heart, the brain, the glandular structure all the organs, the intestines, all the motor system, the nervous system, the endocrine system, these are all entities. They are entities of magnetic unities.
They are part of living organisms that are cooperating together for the common good. To abuse one is to damage all. To neglect one is to neglect all. Each of these organs has its own field in the body, and all these fields together constitute the, the, the grand magnetic field that surrounds the complete person. Now that we go inside of this for a moment to see what we're dealing with. So we go back to Pythagoras, who was very uh, timely in that. He tells us that in Egypt there was a temple in which therapy was the result of this contemplation of the symmetrical geometric solids. In other words, the images of therapy were mathematical cubes, octagons, and various forms, dodecahedrons, each one placed upon a kind of altar or pedestal for the contemplation of the sephirah. All were symmetric geometric solids, perfect and complete in structure. To look upon them was therapeutic, because look to look upon them accepted their energy as a reality in our lives. Now these stone solids apparently were not alive. They only gave the impression of value, but actually they were alive. Every form in nature, natural or artificial, has a magnetic field. From the tiniest atom to the greatest galaxy, the magnetic fields are present, and the rules of each of them must be obeyed. Now if an individual looking at a geometric solid sees in it a perfect proportion, this realization enters into the subconscious life of the person. The, the imagery, of, imagery of that solid is sent into the consciousness in the form of a benevolent magnetic center. It means that the individual is seeing a harmony, is seeing something in perfect order and perfect correctness. And in this, and in visualizing it, wherever we see perfection, it improves ourselves. Wherever we accept discord as inevitable, it injures ourselves. Everywhere looking around us in nature, we see that all natural things are benevolent. It is only when these are abused, mostly by humanity, that these benevolences are lost. So we find that we live in a universe in which everything is in harmony if we are. Now we can say, of course, that somebody else might be out of harmony, and this could injure us. Actually, it's not quite true. The magnetic field which protects us, protects us against any negative magnetic field that does not arise within ourselves. We are not contaminated by other people, unless by our very conscious weakness, or our intellectual weakness, or our emotional weakness, we surrender our integrity to the attitudes of other people. If we commit misdemeanors of one kind or another, we are responsible by the effect of these mistakes on our own magnetic field. Now the magnetic field not only covers this type of thing, but it covers elimination. The intestinal walls, all of this type of thing is damaged, as we know, by hysteria, uh, by various moods. The individual becomes ill, because of a bad disposition. Now we consider this to be just symbol of something that happens that way, but it is not. The individual who is sickened by dispositional fault is sickened because he has damaged the, meta, the uh, field, the magnetic field of some essential part of his own nature. If he has damaged the magnetic field of his digestive system, he will have dyspepsia. And if the dyspepsia lasts long enough, and the magnetic field is sickened long enough, then long uh, enduring chronic ailments can set in. No individual actually is infected entirely from himself, but never completely without himself. All of these unities of fact must be in harmony. Now in the Rosicrucian philosophy, we had alchemy, the transmutation of various phases of life. Alchemy was a transformation and a transmutation of energies. And these energies are essentially the same ones that we have in magnetism. 
we therefore have the a constant realization that everything we do and everything that we see and have has values of its own. Now let us pick up a pebble from the beach and we suddenly realize that we're in the presence of a little stone. Today there is quite an interest in little stones, all kinds of stones. We are interested in the crystals that form in rocks and all these types of things. But crystals are formed by magnetism. They are formed by a rate of vibration peculiar to a certain element. And that particular rate of vibration can evolve through the mineral, plant, vegetable, and animal. It is always present. There is a magnetic core on each kingdom, and each kingdom unfolds within this magnetic field. And within each of the com composite fields, individual members of the fields, with various degrees of growth, are in variously individually conditioned. Everywhere this process of keeping faith with integrity is the, becomes the natural secret of security, survival, and world peace. Now we can say that it would be very un unlikely that we'll say a potato could have a magnetic field of its own, but it does. In fact, every cell within the potato as a magnetic field of its own. Therefore, we come into the problem of nutrition. And nutrition is very largely the study of the magnetic fields of various food products. It also tells us what happens when these food products are adulterated or are variously misused or uh, poisonous elements are introduced into them. All this is part of a mystery that is solved in magnetism. We pass laws against these misuses, but we fail to realize that it is not just the physical factor that we have to work with. The physical factor is only a fragment of it. The main problem is to realize that behind all of these problems, whether of government or of religion or of philosophy, all these things are in trouble because of lack of integrity. And integrity is simply keeping the laws and rules of energy fields. Each field has its own integrities. All integrities in all fields are compatible. All lack of integrities, all departures from integrity in any or all fields are in conflict constantly. The only way the individual can escape conflict is by never abusing the energy factors of his own life. He must never abuse his body, his emotions, or his mind. He must never permit himself to develop attitudes that are incompatible with the integrities which nature has bestowed. The magnetic fields are absolutely honest. There is no possible way of making them dishonest. The only thing we can do with them is to destroy or limit the manifestation of their integrity. If we break the rule, we lose the benefit of that particular energy. When we lose that benefit, we then say that evil has come to us. But it is not an evil thing that has come to us. It is the failure of a good thing to be developed and, and purified and in pen intensified. The magnetic fields are also in a state of constant evolution. They're in evolution in the life of the person. The individual may be born on a certain level of magnetic integrity. If he becomes a better person, he strengthens these uh, values in himself. Because actually, it is all a matter of gradually strengthening the perfection of an energy resource. Now, no one is going to perfect it in one life or a hundred lives, maybe. But he's going to grow. And the more integrity grows, the more rapidly the individual becomes harmoniously adjusted to the principle of life to which he belongs. In our world at the present time, we are in a sad state in which practically everyone has broken every conceivable rule. We are living day by day, trying to live off the profits from our own mistakes. And this is not really profitable. We are not re realizing that this has nothing to do primarily with the theology. This has nothing to do with laws of government. This has nothing to do actually with our legal codes. 
It has to do with the relationship of energy to its proper ends and purposes. We know what it's supposed to be, we know what it's supposed to do, and we know that it isn't accomplishing that. Everything that has an existence has a magnetic, magnetic field. It may have not one that is not even visible. And the whole of our atmosphere, the whole of the world in which we live, is one mass of magnetic interplays. But as long as these are kept honest, they are all compatible. And a universe in which there was no dishonesty would be free from every infirmity.